Hey everybody, welcome in to Mindset Monday. My name is Dr. Jake Tucker, and if you're joining me live, welcome in. We do these every Monday. We're focusing on a different thing, highlighting the health from the mindset perspective. You know, every single one of us has a philosophy on life, whether you know it or not, that you live by, that you make decisions by. And what that does is that shapes us and that molds us and it determines our outcomes even before we make those decisions in the moment. And so having an important mindset about health, about life is so, so key. And so I want to talk to you a little bit about that with some of these coronavirus stats and some of these death stats, because, you know, my wife and I, we, we like to read through not just the news, but the actual literature and some of the numbers that are coming out. And so the CDC, they actually report some of the stuff, the United Nations and the World Health Organization, they report some of this stuff as the numbers come out and as the numbers come available. And so what we're seeing this early in the year, 2020 compared to 2019, compared to 2018, at this point of this year, compared to this point of last year and compared to this point of 2018, the deaths are actually down overall this year, relatively. Now, if you take a look at that in context of this chart over to the side, we actually see that overall, however, that year by year, our deaths per thousand people is up. And that's not just at this point of the year, that's as a trend going year by year overall, the whole of 2018, the whole of 2019. And really, if you look back at this, since 2008, our mortality rates per thousand people have been going up. And so what does that mean? It means that we're getting sicker and sicker. We're dying earlier and earlier and per thousand people just in the U.S. These are U.S. numbers as reported by the World Health Organization. We are dying faster. So that means that we are less and less healthy. And where are those deaths coming from? Well, we look at the statistics. And when you look at just the most common causes of death, number one in the U.S. last year was cardiovascular disease, 840,000 deaths due to cardiovascular disease. Last year, cancer, over 600,000 deaths. Cancer is expected to surpass heart disease as the number one cause of death in the United States this year. And you look at those two deaths and you look at the research on it, 90% or more of these deaths are lifestyle preventable or lifestyle reversible. According to the literature, the Journal of Pharmaceutical Research says that cancer is made largely a lifestyle preventable disease, but it requires a dramatic change in addressing the causes that create cancer. And so that comes from inflammation. And you look at our mindset when it comes to health. Most of us don't even begin to address our health until after what? Until after we begin to lose, until after there's a symptom, right? Because when there's a symptom, that's when we want to do something. So look at this. So when, when I was born at two days old, I was healthy, released from the hospital, sent home with my mom. But at two weeks old, I quit breathing and turned blue. First symptom, right? So when you have a symptom, what do you do? You do what my mom did. You freak out, you rush to the emergency room and you have the medical professionals, the best in the world, mind you, we have the most, most expensive healthcare system in the world with the best medical professionals in the world. And what do they do? They look at the symptoms, they do their tests and they make the best diagnosis. Now you may not know this, but the diagnosis that they give you may or may not have anything to do with the cause of disease. Something like tendinitis or arthritis is literally just the Latin term for the symptom you're having. Inflammation of the tendon, inflammation of the joint. And so you have to you have to kind of look into the Latin meaning behind it. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have a disease. It just means that you have a symptom. And so they go in and they run these tests. The problem is they aren't able to come up with a diagnosis. So instead of giving me a treatment, they send me to a med another medical professional called a specialist. Now, this is the second step in the, in the process. If you get beyond your standard medical professional, so in my case, we got a pediatrician, maybe a specialized pediatrician in the emergency room, whoever was on call, they send me to a respiratory specialist. He doesn't know what's going on, so he ten sends me to a pediatric respiratory specialist. And I go on down this line of specialists to about 12 different specialists. Now, none of them are able to give me a diagnosis until I end up at a specialist center at the University of Michigan Children's Hospital in Ann Arbor, one of the best medical facilities in the world. And again, they try their darndest to find a diagnosis based off of the symptoms that I'm having. And what they're finding, I'm quitting breathing randomly. 
up to 14 or really up to 17 times in a night. That's the most I had, but an average of 14 times a night. And so they're, they're going through and they're trying to come up with these diagnoses so that based off of the diagnosis, based off of the symptoms, they can give me what? They can give me a medication all based off of the symptoms. Look, if you wait until you feel the symptom of what's going on underneath, you have to wait until you lose 40% function. The definition of health is 100% optimal function and healing across mental, emotional, physical, and social components. That's the World Health Organization. That's Dorland's Medical Dictionary. No definition of health in the world defines health as how you feel. But if you wait until you feel it, you wait until you lose 40% function. Now that can happen in an instant, right? You can be driving down the highway, a pull, car pulls out in front of you, you slam into it, whiplash, tear through the muscles, ligaments, and tendons, and all of a sudden you feel it. But in the case of cancer, in the case of heart disease, it doesn't happen instantaneously. Maybe you start off and you're not getting good, healthy foods. Maybe you're nutrient deprived. And so slowly your function starts to spiral. Maybe you're not getting enough oxygen through exercise and movement. And so maybe that function starts to slowly decrease. Maybe you were subluxated in a car accident, but you didn't feel badly afterwards. It didn't go far enough. And so glad, gradually that degeneration in the joints started to build up and it started to spiral. And then you hit the age of 50, you hit the age of 60, you go in for that physical, you get the diagnosis, you've got high blood pressure, early signs of cardiovascular dysfunction, early signs of heart disease, and so what does the doctor do? He gives you a medication to artificially lower or raise your blood pressure, depending on where it needs to go. And what does that do? It keeps it up or it keeps it down in the healthy range for a little bit. But where's your function at? Did you do anything to address the cause of what decreased the function in the first place? And so they gave me the diagnosis in the children's hospital of congestive heart, or not congestive heart failure, of sudden infant death syndrome. They said, this is our best guess. We don't know what's going on. We don't know what causes it, but this is what we suspect he has. And so hopefully he'll grow out of it. Now, my mom had gone to dozens of specialists. She was in this tens of thousands of dollars, as most Americans are. We spend an average of $11,000 per person every single year on healthcare costs. It's the most expensive healthcare system in the world. And you think with all the money that we spend on healthcare, all the drugs we take, it's 5% of the world's population. We take 74% of the world's prescription drugs. We take 80% of the world's painkillers and 90% of the world's psychotropic and anti-anxiety medications, antidepressants. If money and drugs and the best healthcare professionals and the best facilities and the really the best of everything, even the best legislature, when it comes to healthcare, if you walk into an emergency room off the street with the inability to pay, you still have to get treated. Even with all these things lined up in our favor, our healthcare system out of 37 industrialized nations tied for dead last, 37th out of 37. 13 out of 13, three out of three, it doesn't matter how long that list is, we come in dead last, unless you compare us to all the countries of the world, then we come in 72nd overall. And yes, our mortality rates are increasing. So two things that you can take from this tonight. Number one, don't base your health on how you feel. The presence or absence of symptoms does not define health. And number two, we need to be focusing on function, on function, because the better you are functioning, the better you're going to be able to fight off and prevent sickness and illness in your body. And so what does that mean? That means that we have to focus on what controls function and healing. And that starts with the central nervous system. Your heart can't beat. Your lungs can't take a breath. You can't heal a cut on your leg. Heck, you cannot bring two cells together in the womb to start to create another human life without a nerve impulse traveling from the brain down the spinal cord and out the nerves to every organ, cell, and tissue in your body. It doesn't happen any other way. We also have to be giving ourselves the right building blocks, the proper nutrients and nutrition. We have to make sure that we're not creating inflammation through the things that we eat or through not getting enough oxygen through exercise. There's a genetic requirement for movement in our life. We have to make sure that we're not being exposed to toxins because all of these things, the presence 
of the good things help to keep us healthy, but the absence of the good things or the presence of the bad things actually interferes with the body's ability to express itself through function to health. And so I hope tonight you actually learned something. But if you need more information on the nutrition component of this, we are doing a webinar live next week, a week from tonight at 6.30 p.m. So if you're on our, on our Facebook page right now watching this, make sure that you go and you find that reminder for that. You click Get Reminder on that, and Facebook will notify you when that goes off. If you're on YouTube, make sure that you click Get Reminder when you find that event. And if you can't find it, go to our Facebook page right now, and there's a event about that webinar, you can click on that link and you can click get a reminder. You can click that you want a notification for that. We'll text you or we'll tag you in that event as we go live. So make sure you tune in for that. We're going to dive deep on some of the basics of nutrition. It's the Nutrition 101. I want to make sure that we're addressing some very specific myths when it comes to nutrition and the way that we think about and act towards food. But we're going to be diving into this every single day. Tomorrow is Total Health Tuesday. Wednesday, we're going to be doing a live workout in the office. And then Thursday is Throwback Thursday. So we're going to throw it back over the past week. We're going to find the most popular video. And we're going to dive deeper on one of those topics that you like the most. So if you like this video, make sure to like, comment, like the page. Make sure you're getting notifications. That notification bell is turned on. And I will see you tomorrow at, at 5.30 p.m. for another video. For me and my team, you have a great week. Stay blessed, stay healthy. I'll see you later, guys.